Hi everybody, welcome to the video webinar. I'm John Bowens with Equity Trust Company. Really excited about today's program. We're gonna be talking all about investing in real estate with a self-directed IRA, self-directed 401k, Roth IRA, covered education savings account, or other tax advantaged investment account. Now the great thing about today's video webinar is we're gonna share with you three client stories. And it's not just Equity Trust or myself sharing these stories, it's actually coming directly from these three individual clients. I'm gonna introduce you to Candace, Jan, and Bob, and then video format, you're gonna hear directly from these three investors how they've been successfully investing in real estate with their self-directed IRAs, as well as a Coverdell education savings account. Now, before I get there and I introduce those videos to you, again, there's three videos in this session, I wanna talk a little bit about the three driving forces, if you will, of why these investors made the decision to take action and begin investing in real estate with their self-directed IRA. Okay, number one was that these investors were looking for additional opportunities to diversify their existing retirement portfolio. So these were investors, and you'll hear directly from them, that they became a little bit disenfranchised with the traditional stock market. In fact, one of the investors, Candace, talks a little bit about what happened to her retirement portfolio post 9-11, and ultimately why she made the decision to begin investing in real estate in non-stock market related investment opportunities. Now that's not to say that investing in real estate is a better option than the stock market or vice versa. Ultimately, you have to determine what's gonna make the most sense for you. But these three investors, one of the common patterns that we saw was that they had suffered losses in the traditional stock market or they had experienced some level of volatility and that was a compelling reason for them to move forward with self-directing into real estate. All right, number two was mitigating tax liability. So what you're gonna learn about from these three investors is how they're using their self-directed IRAs, Roth IRAs, covered education savings accounts to buy and hold real estate. You'll see some examples of clients who have flipped real estate and the retirement account that they're using is tax exempt. So the profits that are being returned into that IRA are tax deferred, or in the case of a Roth IRA, totally tax free, if you will. So you're gonna learn a little bit more about why they're electing to do these types of investments inside of their self-directed IRA from a tax mitigation perspective. And then last but not least, these are investors that wanted to leave a legacy to their children, their grandchildren, and potentially many generations to come. So you're gonna hear from a client by the name of Jan. She talks a little bit about how she's gotten her daughter involved in their real estate business and how their daughter is utilizing her Roth IRA to invest in real estate through a partnership right alongside her two parents. So before I jump into those three videos, it is important to understand a little bit about equity trust, what we do and how we operate from a educational perspective. So Equity Trust Company is a passive self-directed IRA custodian. We don't give tax, legal, or financial advice. We don't perform due diligence on your behalf as you're engaging in any traditional or non-traditional investment opportunities. But what we can do and what we're doing in this webinar training is providing education and information so that way you can explore all of the different concepts and all of the different ideas and ultimately make a good decision for yourself and your family as a self-directed IRA investor. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the first client story. This story is from Candace. You're gonna hear directly from Candace. A little bit of background on Candace. She's the one I mentioned before that she had suffered losses in the stock market. And in her very first year, she talks about with her self-directed IRA with equity trust through flipping real estate, she was able to double her returns. So it's an incredible way to learn more about how an investor here at Equity Trust Company was able to fast track their success with their self-directed IRA. Let's have a listen and a view. Candace, this is where I'm gonna let you take over control. So this is a transaction that Candace completed in August of 2017, and she bought it at the Cuyahoga County auction, is that correct? No, Summit. Summit County auction, okay. Summit County auction, bought it for $80,100. And again, she bought it at the auction. 
So logistically, we got to figure out how to get the money from the IRA ahead of time, right? We got to figure out how to get the money from the IRA to the, to the county, right? In about 30 days. And then we got to figure out how to get money from the IRA to pay for the rehab. We have to find the people to rehab the house, right? Can Gary and Candace go over there and do the work themselves? No. Rule of thumb to use in the industry, you can write this down. You can do the desk work, but not the sweat equity. Okay, I'll say that again. You can do the desk work and not the sweat equity. So we have some things we need to talk about through this case study and how Candace put all of this together. So Candace, I'm going to stop and I'm going to let you take it from the very top all the way through in terms of how you found the property, how you put the down payment down, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, per, yes, uh, the sheriff sales we frequent, um, that's not our only deals. We do off-market or MLS even if we find a good deal, our realtor finds a good deal. But um, this one is a sheriff sale, and what we do is, um, you know, we research them. Usually a month ahead of time, we'll start doing some investigation. A lot of due diligence, researching the property. Um, you can't get in most of them. Well, you can't get in any of them, but you cannot, uh, people may be living in them. So you cannot go in them at all. You can't even peek in the windows usually. So um, just do due diligence. I, we talk to neighbors and uh, just scope out the area. We even call building inspectors and see if they've been in the house recently. So we do our research on it, you know, figure out what we're going to offer before we go to the sale, what is our maximum bid. And we go to the sale and I uh, have the check ready, which I request quite ahead of time. So I always have, you know, probably about six checks on hand that I keep for the sheriff sales, the tax sales. And um, that way I'm ready to go. And I just hold on to them from the IRA. I'll request them and just hold on to them. And then after, pardon me? Well, I just do, usually if it's under 100000 all the taxes, all the tax sales are different in each county. So you have to look at what they are. So if it's a, under 100000 value for the tax department, um, it depends what county. It could be $5,000 or it could be 10000 So we, I just usually... Yeah, right. If it's a tax sale, it's $1,000 usually, and most mm -hmm. of those sales. So I have those checks ready to go. And, um, and even if, say, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm buying a property over $100,000, i will get a check, and that way I have it. What's the worst that can happen? They just apply it, right? You don't need the exact amount. So, you know, if I only needed $5,000, I had a $10,000 check, they could just apply it to the purchase of the property. So then it usually, depending on what county, it takes about um, four weeks, sometimes longer, six weeks, could take eight weeks to get the properties. Uh, the property has to be paid depending on what county you go to in your state, they do have to be paid in a certain amount of time. You could pay them maybe up to 30 days, some of the counties, but you pay interest. So just keep that in mind. So I will get the payoff amount. After the sale, I'll call usually the next day, get the payoff amount. And all I do is request the check from Equity Trust, and actually they're local, so I can pick up the check, or they can mail it to me either way. Um, and I usually always have the checks mailed to me. I don't have them mailed directly pretty much anywhere. It depends, unless it's a utility, but I usually have those checks sent to me. Um, and then uh, I just go in and pay off the amount, you know, within a few days or a week. This is a um, sheriff sale, foreclosure. Yes, not a tax, but a foreclosure. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Yes, I do. That's in the due diligence. You want to do a title search if you're serious about a property, and if you have a relationship with your local title company, um, they'll do those for you. Title search. Candace, how does that work at the county auctions? If you're buying a property mm -hmm. from the county auction, they're going to be, before they deed you the property, is there still risk of there being encumbrances or title blemishes? Well, they need to disclose okay. what they're investigating. If there's, they, they do not, if you do it, if you do a lien, um, I um, search on the property for liens, there could be an IRS lien on the property that you're not, it does not come up. 
um, what was the other one? There's one other one that could come up, but when you're doing the when you're doing uh, the county, we'll disclose that subject to second mortgage, or if there's a IRS lien, the county discloses those. And that's at the time of auction. They're disclosing, so you know right. when you're well, bidding. Before. Right, right. When you know before. when you're bidding on the property. You're bidding on this property, and it has X. It'll say sub subject to. Okay. But then we also do our own lien search. So you're, you know, you're you're doing what you can to do your due diligence. Due diligence is like key to everything because you don't want to get stuck with back taxes, or you you really have to do your research. So this one was a share of sale um, for closure, and we purchased it for 80,100. The repairs were 18, and we don't do any of the work ourselves on our IRAs uh, properties. Um, so the total investment we have on this one was 98.1, and we listed it, oh, forget what we listed that one for, close 145-ish, or I don't remember. Maybe 150. And it sold um, within 24 hours. We had uh, offers on it. And closing costs, with closing costs, the net profit that went back into my IRA was 36.8. And I just want to mention, I worked for many years in the medical field. And um, when September 11th hit, as you know, maybe you know, some of you may know if you remember that, uh, my, my IRA went in half. You know how the market just went kapooey. And it took me so many years to recoup it, and I didn't even recoup it all. And when I switched over four or five years ago to equity trust, in a year I doubled my money. So that, it's, that's so important. I mean, if you're thinking about this, we looked into it. You know, we saw you speak at the National RIA mm -hmm. about six years ago, and I wish we would have signed up right then. And we didn't, and we waited. And you, you know, and we're like, well, I don't really understand it. But it was like, God, we should have did it. I mean, it's so easy. They make it so simple. I mean, they're just fantastic with education. Uh, walk you through the whole process if you have a problem. Once you buy a property, the title company takes over. Just deal with the title company that is familiar with the IRAs. They take over for you. You don't hear from them. I mean, until the property closes, we, I don't hear anything. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, and it's such a simple process. So if I can do it, all of you can do it. <laughs> so um, on, the, on the acquisition side, mm -hmm. you're acquiring it. You have, there's no purchase contract in this instance, right, because you're, you're bidding on the property at the auction sale. No purchase contract, So right. to demonstrate what the money's going to be used for, <laughs> Candace is just providing the equity trust company an advertisement for the auction sale. I assume, do you use something online or do you use newspaper? What do you typically provide? Oh, I have to provide the sale, the printout of the sale. Okay. Yes, I do. They request that. Okay. Right. Now, when you go to closing, the closing documents, you're sending those into Equity Trust for signature. Right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. And I know you've previously, you've just been scanning and emailing those in. Now Correct. you have the capability of document right. upload. Right. But ultimately, those documents are coming into Equity Trust Company. We're signing them. Right. Sending them off to the title company. Okay. And the bill pays. He said three minutes. I could do it in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just go through, you know, when I pay yeah. my bills, and it's like a minute. So, so it's so easy. Everything's plugged in, and it's saved. You just have to repeat. So let's touch. That's rinse and repeat. Rinse and so repeat. Rinse yes. and repeat. Yes. So let's touch on that, and then I want to hit Frank's question and Jim, correct? And Jim's quite, I wanted to make sure I get the, remember the name. So on the bill payments, can you step people through how that works? The bill payments? Yeah. So I just get an electric bill, and I go into my account. I pick if it's traditional or Roth. I have two accounts, and then whatever the house is under, I just, it, everything's saved there. I just go through it in a minute and put the amount in, hit the Illuminate Ohio Edison, and mm -hmm. send. All right. So that was a really incredible story by Candace, right? So one of the few of the key takeaways that I wanted to emphasize with Candace's story. So number one, she buys properties at auctions. Typically, these are share of sale auctions. And she talked a little bit about and has talked to me a little bit about how she uses our equity trust, my equity real estate investment process system. So when she executes on getting funds for her real estate purchase, she could simply log online through her MyEquity online access, request the funds, 
an equity trust company with her direction and her sign off is sending those funds out to the necessary bank accounts. Now that she has the money out of the IRA in replacement for that cash, of course, is a deed to the property. It's very important to understand that fundamentally that cash leaving the account to acquire the property does not trigger any type of taxable event or a penalty. That's an investment very similar to investing in stocks or mutual funds. When you buy a stock or a mutual fund, fundamentally cash leaves the account in return for that cash is a stock certificate. Candace buying property, it's the same concept. Cash leaves the account and in return for that cash is a deed to the property. Now she rehabbed that property. When she put the approximately $18,000 or so into the property, she used the online My Equity bill pay system. So think she was able to, from the comfort of her own home, on her smartphone device or on her PC, she was able to say, Equity Trust, please make a check payable to XYZ contractor, mail it to this address, she hits submit and that process, that payment is being processed for her. She can also, if she chooses to, and some folks aren't familiar with this, is elect to do an ACH direct deposit. So you could simply request for Equity Trust to send the funds out via ACH direct deposit to your contractor, to the utility companies that you're working with for taxes, insurance, etc. So it's important to understand that Equity Trust has these digital capabilities for you to be able to seamlessly process your real estate transactions. Okay, so let's move on to the next client story. This next client story involves three individuals, in fact. Now, the speaker you're gonna hear, her name is Jan. She's the mother of the family. Her husband, Gary, and then her daughter, Brittany, all have Roth IRAs. And they started with Equity Trust about 10 years ago. They had a small amount of money in their Roth IRAs, and now they have grown those Roth IRAs tax-free over the last 10 years to build up a significant portfolio. Now, you're gonna hear just one story, but it's important to mention that it's been a journey for Jan, Gary, and Brittany. When they started off, they didn't have enough money in their IRAs to acquire properties or hold rentals. So they began partnering their Roth IRAs together to acquire properties, as well as partner their Roth IRAs with other investors creating joint ventures with other contractors and investors to rehab houses and now they're at the point where they're buying and holding real estate they're lending money they're doing a variety of real estate investment type transactions in those roth iras and one of the great parts of this story is when jan talks a little bit about her daughter and how they've gotten their daughter started with using her roth ira she'll have many more years to grow that in a tax-free environment in what we always call compounding interest in the absence of taxation. Let's have a listen. So here's a first case study. This is a house uh, that I renovated in uh, Missouri. And you can get an idea. These are the after photos. And uh, what we do is create like new houses in established neighborhoods. And to give you an overview, this is a house that I bought in October of 2016 for $299,000. And it looks like there's an extra number there on the next line, but <laughs> um, between October 17th and April of the following year, we made seven payments to our contractor. So that's an easy way to take the money from the IRA and pay for the renovation. So I have a wonderful relationship with several GCs, general contractors, and I actually have done some wonderful joint ventures with these contractors. So what I've worked out with them is that I will give them all the money for materials and subs, they'll do the work, and then they'll hand the keys back to me, I'll sell the property, and then we'll split the profit, usually 40% to the contractor and 60% to me. And so it, it's a great way to not have to pay all of those fees to your contractor up front. The contractor's really motivated in the deal because every $100 he saves, that's $40 he's putting in his pocket. So it eliminates a lot of my oversight of the GC. And it's been a, a wonderful uh, idea for us. Um, so with this transaction, the IRA received 54550 after expenses, and it was about an eight-and-a-half-month process. 
And then here's just some fun pictures because everyone likes pictures of beautiful houses. Uh, but what we do is we take these houses down to the, the studs and, and plywood and rebuild them. Uh, it's cos all cosmetic, uh, usually, although we're not afraid of the challenges. If it's mold or foundation problems, we'll take care of those as well. But we really like to create just beautiful houses, and, and our, our buyers um, follow our work, and, and we usually plug them in. Once they find a Duke Holmes house that they like, they're off to the races. And we always open up these houses and make them uh, just a beautiful flowing floor, floor plan. There's the dining room. There's the master bedroom. And you can see it's a small bath, but uh, we make it as beautiful as possible and make it all brand new, which people love. We always add these cubbies. People love the idea of keeping organized. And then we always finish our lower levels because it's a way of doubling the square footage without a, a major expense. So we'll open up the lower level. We'll take off that little door up at the top so you don't feel like you're going into a basement. In fact, we don't even use the B word. We always refer to these as the lower levels. And so people feel like they're just going into an extension of their home because we use the same finishes as we do on the main level. And uh, just to share a little bit more about uh, our daughter and her story and how she got us involved. So when we attended uh, that workshop and, and she was all excited, what we decided was to keep the momentum going, we needed to set her up with her own IRA. So we found a way to do that. Because I'm self-employed, it was very easy to put her on our website and to put her in some of our marketing materials and then pay her $5,500. And why $5,500? Because <laughs> that's the exact amount that goes into her IRA. So we had fun sitting her down at our big conference table and presenting her with a check for $5,500. And of course, her eyes lit up, but then we explained to her where that money was going. <laughs> um, so it was, but it was very fun because we really had her buy-in. You know, she was very excited to think that she was going to have her own IRA and that she could start to take control of it and, and figure out how to make it work and grow. So she has bought five different houses, portions of five houses, anywhere from 3% to 7% that she's had invested in properties that I have renovated to sell. So she's grown her IRA up to 50000 in four years. And it's fun to see how she's off to the races. Okay, so another great story uh, from an equity trust client. Now, a couple highlights that I wanted to take away. Again, as I mentioned, you heard Jan talk a little bit about why she made that decision to move forward and begin investing in real estate with their self-directed IRAs. They actually had 401ks, her and her husband, Gary, they rolled those over to traditional IRAs and then they did a conversion to a Roth IRA. So for those of you who aren't familiar with that, that's okay. We have more training and education. You can go to YouTube, in fact, and search equity trust and Roth IRA conversions. We have an entire video on Roth conversions. It means nothing more than essentially taking traditional tax deductible money, converting it to the Roth, getting the taxes out of the way, and then going forward, you have all of that tax-free profit. And as Jan talks about in a future stage, she talks a little bit about being a lifestyle entrepreneur. And her, her idea is her and her husband and her daughter, when she's in her retirement years, to be able to enjoy the standard of living that they desire. And all that money that they want to eventually take out of that Roth IRA is 100% tax-free. It's in a Roth IRA, so it never hits their 1040 as ordinary income taxes. And that's an incredibly powerful concept for our viewers here to understand is that the Roth IRA growing tax-free, compounding interest in the absence of taxation, has the benefit of after 59 and a half, which is the qualified retirement age, when you're taking money out, it's tax-free. Now, another story about Jan that we didn't get into in this session is she now owns a rental property in her Roth IRA. And it's generating anywhere between 850 to 900 net per month. So conceivably, once she breaches 59 and a half, she's got an extra $800 or $900 in tax-free cash flow every single year. And guess what? That's an appreciating property. If she sells that property, 
There's no long-term capital gains tax. There's no recapture depreciation for those of you that are familiar with depreciation or recapture depreciation on properties because it's in the Roth IRA. So she finds this as a much more simplified approach to investing in real estate, utilizing their self-directed IRAs. Okay, so let's move on to the last client story we have. Uh, this is Bob. And what's unique about Bob is that he has done many, many different things with his self-directed IRAs. And it's not just his self-directed IRAs. He utilizes a solo 401k. He also utilizes a Coverdale education savings account. And that's the story you're gonna hear here. Um, in fact, on one of his transactions, he bought a property in Cincinnati, Ohio, and then sold it on a land contract using his daughter's Coverdale education savings account. And he started with a small amount of money in the covered education savings account, but he's been able to grow it substantially over time. And the reason why I bring this up to our viewers is that it's important to understand that even if you're starting with a small amount of money, and everybody's got to start somewhere, even if you're starting with a small amount of money, there can potentially be options for you. So Jan and Gary, they started with a small amount of money. Their daughter, Brittany, started with a small amount of money. Ultimately, they grew that over many, many years through partnerships and through other smaller dollar deals. So Bob's going to talk about that as well. So let's jump right into Bob's story. Okay, so this first deal um, was uh, I bought this in my son's CISA account. Um, at the time, I um, he had a um, bird dog that would run around and take pictures of all the HUD houses for me, and we run comps and he'd figure out and get the offers made. Um, this was a three bedroom, two bath in Price Hill, which is you know, not the best part of Cincinnati. Um, and so with these type of owner financing deals, what I love to do is fix the mechanicals and get it so that it's livable, but not spend the money that it would take to make the house pretty. Now, first thing off, when you're doing owner financing, what do you need to be careful of? Frank, yes. So if you're going to go do this, make sure you know the rules. And general rule of thumb is one, you're fine. One a year, you're fine. If you're doing more than that, you need to be more careful. Um, so the house wasn't in bad shape. It just wasn't beautiful like Jan's houses are. Um, so this is a house that would rent for six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month in Cincinnati. Um, I had, you know, roughly, what, nine grand in the place. Um, so I put an ad on Craigslist that said, if you can do the work, you can own this house for $5.95 down, $3.95 a month. You think I got a couple phone calls? <laughs> I got a whole bunch of applications. Um, so I ended up selling it on a land contract, 33.5, 15 years, 8%. Um, now, but the interesting thing was, the guy who ended up buying the house was not your typical Price Hill renter. He worked for OSHA, he had a $3,100 a month reti military retirement income, plus he made another eight grand a month, was in the process of going through a divorce. This house just worked for him and his situation. And so I ended up getting a real good, high quality person in here, uh, and ended up with a real nice, um, he then put a bunch of money in the house. Um, yeah, I went through and did the calculation. It's like a 44% internal rate of return, which is nice for CISA accounts, because in CISA accounts, you need to sort of really multiply the money that you have in there. Because if you're paying 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a year tuition bills, it's sort of tough to get from 2,000 to that about. Um, unless you're doing that type of thing. And so... Um, and Bob, one thing I wanted to make sure everyone understands, uh, and this was a transaction in Ohio, Bob used a, a land contract or a contract for deed. So when he sold the property, and feel free to jump in here, and Jeff, we can get some commentary from you as well. Uh, when the property was, was sold to the, to the end buyer, the owner-occupant, right, uh, it was sold on a land contract, not on a sale with a carryback note and mortgage. So the deed was not transferred to the homeowner. The deed won't be transferred until their last payment is made, correct? That's me correct. And, and the, the way I describe a land contract to people is it's like a car title. 
when you buy a car and borrow money from the bank, they give you this little white slip of paper that says, well, yeah, the bank really owns it, but you can have the car until you finish paying it. And when you finish paying it, we'll give you the actual title to the car. In, in Ohio, Bob, why, why are you structuring it that way? So in this type of seller finance transaction works really well in Ohio because we have a great land contract law. So what happens is when somebody doesn't pay me, and on these type of transactions, roughly about 20% of the people blow up. What, once they are 30 days delinquent, at that point I give them a 10 day notice, and after that it's like a regular ev eviction, provided that two, th two criteria are met. Number one, they have to have paid less than 20% of the principal balance of the property. And number two, they have to have been there for less than five years. So if somebody pays off half the price of the house, yeah, then I have to go foreclose. But at that point, I got all my money back, so I'm fine. On the other hand, if they pay, on time, if they pay for five years, and in year number six they blow up, I can either go work something out with them, or I have to foreclose. But again, if I have somebody who's paid me on time for five years, yeah, the foreclosure's expensive and takes a long time, but it's not the end of the world. And I have done quite a few of these and haven't really actually had to foreclose on people. Just if you talk to people and you work with them, you can usually work something out. All right, so another great story. Um, going back to Jan and then talking about Bob, important to reiterate the three-step process. Okay, so the three-step process to getting started. Step number one is, of course, open and fund the account or accounts that make sense for you. So for Gary, Jan, and Brittany, it was a Roth IRA for each of them. For Bob, it's been phasing over time a solo 401k, a covered education savings account, IRAs, what accounts for his wife, so multiple retirement plans. But ultimately, you gotta start somewhere. So establish and fund the account is step number one. Step number two is identify and direct the investment. So once you find the investment opportunity, you get the investment opportunity under contract. For example, if you're buying a property, in the case of Candace and Gary and Jan and even Bob talking about the CISA accounts, getting the property under contract in the name of the self-directed accounts. And then from there, you have the ability to use the equity trust online my equity system so simply logging online and giving equity trust company the direction filling out the necessary information and digitally processing that transaction where equity trust is wire transferring the funds directly to the title company or directly to the county auctioneer in the case of candace or wherever the funds ultimately need to be sent maybe your real estate closing attorney and then as far as repairs in carrying costs and general maintenance repairs. All those payments are paid for from the self-directed IRAs or IRA. So for example, in the case of Gary, Jan, and Brittany, they in fact had one transaction where they partnered all three IRAs together. So they simply used the online My Equity Bill Pay system to have checks sent directly to their contractor. And then once the money comes back into the self-directed IRA, let's say it's a flip transaction. So in the case of Candace, which was number one, all the money after closing went directly back into the self-directed IRA. So you're gonna set up your account, you're gonna direct your investment, and then you're going to manage your investment, which is step three. So with that being said, if you are someone that's thinking to yourself, hey, I share some of the same struggles or challenges that, that Gary, Jan, and Brittany, and Candace, and Bob talked about. If you're somebody that says, hey, this makes sense for me. I wanna look at investing in real estate, whether it's because you wanna diversify outside of just stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, or you're looking for tax mitigation strategies, you're looking to build a legacy. Ultimately, we can help you through that process. Again, Equity Trust Company, we're a passive custodian, so we can't give you tax, legal, or financial advice, but we can certainly provide a lot of information, a lot of content to help you through that process.